one of Kelco's new F29 programmable flow switches. The F29 is a modular flow switch system. It consists of a wet end piece that can be screwed into a pipe with a paddle. The paddle is long enough to accommodate pipes 25 millimetres and larger. There really is no upper limit. And an electrical assembly that locks onto the wet end of the switch. The wet end of the switch has no metal parts in it. There's nothing in there to corrode, no springs, nothing. The F29 operates magnetically. So it can be used in seawater, in acids, alkali solutions, and in potable water. So in operation, the wet end assembly is uh, screwed into a pipe. Here's one that's been cut off to suit a pipe about 100 mil in diameter. So that piece is screwed into the pipe, and the electrical head then locks onto the wet end. Very secure vein of fitting that's held closed by an Allen screw that's provided and an Allen key. And there's no electrical connection between the two parts. So the electrical head locks on like that. And uh, as soon as you lock the two parts together, the paddle adopts a spring return action, a magnetic spring return action. So in use, flow pushes the paddle forward this is sensed by the electrical head. The F29 then runs, the flow is lost, the paddle swings back to the off position and uh, the pump is then shut down. Um, there's a sensitivity adjustment system built into the F29 and it consists of a movable magnet inside a housing here and you can wind this out to increase the sensitivity of the paddle to low flows. The electrical assembly itself can be fitted with a variety of wet ends. These include high pressure stainless steel wet end with a rating of 200 bars or 2900 psi. Again, there's no connection, no electrical or hydraulic connections through into the F29's electrical housing. The flow switch can also be fitted with a trailing wire sensor, a sensor that comprises of a stainless steel flexible wire. And this kind of sensor can be used for effluent applications. So if you're using the wastewater products, they'll simply strike the wire, flex the wire out of the way and pass along the pipe without doing any damage. But this kind of sensor is ideal for mine dewatering applications and for sewage. The F29 can also be supplied with three quarter inch stainless steel and thermoplastic uh, wet ends with either BSP or MPT threads to suit various applications. Generally, the three-quarter inch versions are used in smaller pipes and cover the range three-quarters of an inch through to about 100 millimetres. The electrical module on the F29 has a protective clip-on skull cap cover that protects the clear electrical housing cover from the elements. So this enables the flow switch to be used in fully exposed outdoor applications without the slightest concern about degradation of the LCD screen or the, uh, the clear lid or ingression of uh, moisture and so forth into the enclosure. The enclosure is, is, uh, is IP67 rated and uh, it, the lid is secured on by six captive stainless steel screws bedding down on a rather oversized gasket. On the underneath side of the F29 housing there are three M20 cable glands. All the cable glands are blanked off as supplied and a kit of cable gland rubbers and cable anchoring rings are supplied with each unit. In use you simply punch out the blanking barrier from the uh, appropriate uh, cable gland that you're going to use. If I remove the lid from the, uh, the F29 we can have a look at its uh, controls and how you would wire it up. So I've undone the screws so if I take the lid off we're left with a facade and an electrical box that's covered by a safety cover. So we'll open the safety cover up and have a look at the terminals. Electrically, the F29 can run from 220 to 240 volts AC supply via this active and neutral, neutral terminal. It can also accept 24 volts AC or DC in using its low voltage active terminal and the common neutral terminal. It has two built-in relays, a 16 amp that's used to give an alarm output if the F29 uh, shuts down or detects loss of flow. The primary pump relay is this relay here, number, relay number one. It has 30 amp resistive rated contacts and it is augmented by a heavy duty drive which consists of a 40 amp solid state relay that can be coupled across the contacts of relay one using a link wire between the HD terminal and the normally open terminal. So if a link wire is placed between these two terminals 
in effect it increases the rating of relay 1 to well over 70 amps and as such it can handle the very largest single phase pump motors made. The F29 also includes a remote input. You can bring a remote input from a tank level switch or a pressure switch uh, and bring it into the F29 using the, low, the remote input terminal here and you can power that external switch through a takeoff from the low voltage active terminal. So if you're running the F29 from the mains, 240 volts or 220 volts, you will have 24 volts AC available here at the low voltage active terminal and that can be used to switch a signal back into the remote input terminal. I have here an F29 that's been wired up to the main so I can demonstrate the functions of the device. The F29 has 11 built-in timers. Uh, the timers are individually programmable and they can uh, do all manner of functions ranging from simple startup through to um, uh, leak detection, anti-cycling, cyclic running and stopping, delayed restarting, um, there's a run-on timer. Each are individually settable and they can be used in conjunction with each other or singly. Uh, in its most basic form the F29 is a simple override on start flow switch. Uh, it's able to start a pump up in spite of an initial lack of flow, wait till flow is established and then hand command over to its paddle and thereafter run held on by the paddle. If flow is lost, the F29 detects the flow stopping and shuts the pump down. If we power the, uh, the F29 up, it will immediately start the pump. There's a light on the corner here that displays the state of the pump. It's green when the pump's running and red when the pump's stopped. There is a paddle state indicator or flow indicator here that is green whenever we've got flow and red when the flow is stopped. And we have a timer up here in the corner that indicates that a timer is running. It's green whenever a run timer is running and red whenever a stop function is running. And we also have a remote input light here that turns blue if an external switch were to be connected to this unit and if closed its contacts. The closing of an external switch contacts can be used to trigger the functions of the F29. For example, to wake it up from a stopped state start a pump and uh, start a sequence of events occurring. So if we power it up it will start up and run its startup timer and the startup timer will run the pump in spite of the paddle initially being in the off position which it is there at the moment. So we'll watch what happens. Here comes the power. Okay our pump's starting and it's telling us that the startup timer is running and it's counting down in seconds. It needs to see flow before that times out. Notice that the pump's running, notice we've got no flow. So I push the paddle forward, our paddle light turns green, our pump's still going, and we've gone over here and now the pump's running. So we now have the paddle in the on position, and uh, the, uh, the pump is running under the control of the F29. If flow is lost, like that, the F29 swings over and runs its run-on timer. The run-on timer can be set from a second through to 15 minutes. Uh, in one second increments, provided the paddle comes back into the on position before that times out, as we've done there, the pump continues to run seamlessly. So the F29 enables the pump to ignore minor fluctuations to flow. So if the paddle's bouncing back and forth due to entrained gas in the pipeline or turbulence, then that will be ignored and the pump will, be continued, will continue to run while ever it's, uh, it's on. If the paddle stays off for more than the time you've set on your run-on timer, the timer times out, as it's about to do there now, and stops the pump. Pump stopping, our pump lights come on red because we've got no flow, and it'll sit there now waiting to start. So in essence, that's the simple function of the F29. Overrides its off state, gets a pump started, allows time for it to establish flow, then hands command over to its paddle. Uh, if, paddle if the flow is interrupted, tolerates the paddle bouncing back and forth, but if the fat flow is genuinely lost, uh, the F29 will shut the pump down. Programming the F29 is incredibly easy to do. It really is incredibly easy. Firstly, it comes supplied with a preset preloaded program. The program is nothing more than a five second startup timer and a five second run on timer. All other functions are shut down. So even if you were to not touch any of the buttons on the unit, but simply to wire it up, it would run. It would run a pump for five seconds, look for flow, provided flow pushed the paddle forward, it would run. And uh, thereafter, if the paddle was uh, 
interrupted, it would ignore any, any interruptions for up to five seconds before shutting down. You can change those settings, you can increase that start up and run on time, you can add other functions such as delayed starting, such as delayed restarting, cyclic running, anti-cycling, very, very easily. So first off, assuming that somebody's been playing around with this unit as I've been doing and made all sorts of changes to it, we can restore it back to its original default state simply by pressing down the reset button and the P button at the same time. If we do that, the screen will go blank. If we then release the P button, it says settings cleared, press P. And away it goes. It's now running the pump and it's restored it back to its five second start up and run on time. So if we're running and we get an interruption, she starts at five and counts down. So it's got a five second start up and a five second run on and nothing else. That's all it's got. So if we want to change those settings here, all we do then is Press the P button to enter programming, like that. And then press it again to step through the menu till we get to the parameter we want to change. So we just press it. It'll display the model number and the version. It'll ask us if we want to use a remote input. Using the up or down buttons here lets us select yes or no to these questions as they come up. In this case, no. Our startup timer there is set to five seconds. Our run on set to five seconds. They're the default settings. And the advanced controls are off. So we might turn the advanced controls on. We're asked if we want a pre-start timer. The pre-start timer will delay the starting of the pump for whatever time you set on it. So you might have a system that requires time to boot up uh, and stabilise, so you might give it a few seconds for that to happen before the F29 allows the pump to start. So you can set that by selecting yes and it'll ask you the number of seconds that you want to uh, give it for a pre-start delay timer. So we'll leave that turned off. Delayed restart. Delayed restart lets us um, in the event of the, uh, the, the paddle swinging the off position and stopping, you can delay it turning back on again for whatever period you like, from a minute through to 100 hours. So if we ignore that and, and move on, we get cyclic running. Cyclic running is currently off. We can turn cyclic running on. We can set it to some period of hours, ending up to, uh, ending up to 99 hours, 59 minutes, and uh, have it run for that time and then shut down. Uh, it'll ask us also if we want to set stopping time. If we leave that set to nothing, then it becomes a batch controller. In effect, it'll run for the set time that we've entered and then shut down indefinitely until you press the reset and uh, run it again. Or we can set a fixed stop time and have it shut down. So, for example, we might be wanting to cyclically pump a bore. We can have it pump for a set period of time, shut down, wait for the standing water level to recover for a set length of time and then fire up again. So, uh, in this case, we'll, uh, we'll set that to some fixed stopping time just for the heck of it. Anti-cycling. Anti-cycling lets us set the number of starts per hour. We can set any value we like in there for starts per hour and uh, if that start rate is exceeded more than 10 consecutive times the F29 will shut the pump down and display a message that cycles that the anti-cycling alarm has been triggered. Accept the settings, yes or no. If we select no to that it'll take us back to the top of the menu and let us uh, step through again. So if we press P to yes to accept it and then press reset to run the pump. So the pump starts, it runs, it counts down on its startup timer, we'll get some flow. So we're now running and we've got a fixed running time of 2 hours 59 minutes. So we set it to cyclically run. If we let it stop, we lose flow during that fixed run time. She'll stop and she'll go over to fixed stop time and she'll now wait for an hour 59 minutes or 2 hours if we set it to, counting down. And it'll display the time left to run here. So now if the paddle's pushed forward, nothing happens because it's, it's going to wait for that fixed stop time. So let's purge those settings back out again. Get back to our original factory default. And away we go. So we'll press that at P again. Brings us back to the top of the menu. We might want to do something really simple like, say, increase the startup time to 10 seconds. It's no harder to do than, than that. We don't have to step our way right through the menu. You can make the change you want to make and then just press the reset button and away it goes using the new settings that you've entered. So programming the F29 is no harder than that. It's very, very simple. The memory is non-volatile. The device does not use a battery, so there's no life to it. It simply retains whatever entries that you have made indefinitely or until you change them. So in a nutshell, that's how the F29 functions. 11 programmable timers, the ability to control the largest single phase or three phase pump motors available, there's no limit, 
on its, uh, its electrical capabilities. It has provision for an external input. It's in an extremely robust and tough weather-tight housing, very well sealed all around. It's designed for years and years of maintenance-free operation, and it's a very versatile tool, uh, a tool that allows a pump installer to, to go to a job with confidence that this controller can be custom programmed to suit many situations that really only crop up on the job and uh, rather than have to have custom built panels made and all sorts of things quite often the F29 will be able to be custom configured to meet specific requirements. So that's about it, the F29 it's available, it's available in all its forms with its stainless steel high pressure wet ends with trailing wire configurations, there's even a dedicated 12 volt DC version for solar pumping systems and that type of thing, battery operated systems. Uh, they're all available. Thank you very much.